Hello guys, this is Celso. In these next tutorial videos, we will be covering some useful commands in OpenDSS such as show, export and visualize. These commands will all be tested in the same circuit, which is an app test circuit that can be found in the OpenDSS installation folder, which was probably placed in your program files folder after the software installation. By opening the app test circuits folder, you will find three more folders. Each one of these contains a different circuit. There is also a PDF file which contains general information about all of these three circuits. For example, their electrical information, their plots, and a few information about how they can be run in OpenDSS. We chose to work on the CKT5 system. Within its folder, 16 DSS files can be found, but in order to run the system, we only need to open the run underscore ckt5.dss. Let's take a look at this file. It starts with a few commented lines, and then there is the compile command. Basically, this command is responsible for reading all the code written in the given file and also for changing the default directory to the path where the referenced file is located. In our case, the referenced file master underscore ckt5.dss is located in the same folder as the run circuit 5 dss file. In other words, it's not changing anything. The directory chosen is the one where all the result files will be saved. Let's open the master file. The first command is the clear. It's responsible for cleaning OpenDSS memory. Then, it's always a good idea to use it whenever you want to load a new circuit. After that, a new circuit element called ckt5 is created. If you want more information about this element, you can check the video called circuit element in the same tutorial. An interesting point here is that the bus1 property has not been explicitly specified, which means that OpenDSS is using its default values, that is a bus called source bus for this property. The next code snippets all start with the redirect command. Like the compile command, it is responsible for the opening and loading the following file. However, differently from the first one, it does not change the default directory. Let's take a look at some of these DSS files. In the wired data underscore secret 5 DSS, there are wired data for 10 different wires. In the line geometry file, we can find some different geometry configurations. Note that the line geometry general element uses some wires created through the wired data class. That's why we should make sure that OpenDSS will first load the code snippets related to the wire data and then the line geometry. These two commands are used for the line element in order to get all their electrical data. For more information about these commands, please watch the video called Wire Data and Line Geometry. By opening the line codes, we can verify that there are only two line codes in this circuit. Each of them directly describe the electrical information of a line. In both cases, the sequential parameters are used in order to do so. It can also be noticed that the impedances and the capacitances for the second one are too low, which makes sense by looking to its name, bus bar. For more information about this command, please watch the video called Line Code. The next file is the lines DSS. Here we find most of the lines of this circuit and we can notice that these lines use either a geometry or a line code in order to have their electrical data defined. Now let's see what we have inside the transformer secret 5 DSS file. There is a reactor which is modeling a series impedance of the circuit element as we can notice the source bus here. Then there is the substation transformer. Pay attention that the sub property is set to yes, which means that this transformer will be recognized by OpenDSS as a substation and will be shown in the circuit plot with a mark and its name. 
The load shape file will not be used because we are just going to perform a snapshot simulation. However, this file is essential for time series simulation, which are not covered in this tutorial. The next file is the load. Here we find all loads of the system. However, we can note that before each load, there is a line responsible for modeling the low voltage network. An important feature here is that all loads are modeled as single phase loads with line to ground voltage equal to 0.24 kV. We are going to see what's the influence of this fact in the system's voltage basis. Another important feature is that all loads use model 4, which requires the use of the CVR watt and CVR VARS properties. Check the OpenSS help to understand these properties. Now, let's open the XFR loads file. As you can be seen, this file describes the distribution transformers of this system. They are modeled as a single phase transformers. Just for fun, let's see what is connected to the secondary side of this transformer. In order to do it, we need to get the name of its bus 2 parameter. The same bus is probably connected to a low voltage single bus line in the load file. Let's try to find it. As you can be seen, this line is following that transformer and its second terminal is connected to a load. The next file is the capacitor DSS, which contains four capacitors and their respective cap controllers. Just remember, in this tutorial, we will not be covering the control element in OpenDSS. Finally, we can see that we don't have any regulators and generators in the system. The next two line commands are set voltage basis and cock voltage basis. The first one is where we define all line to line voltage levels in the system, in KV. Actually, in this example, there are more than the necessary. For instance, there is no element with a 0.208 KV line to line voltage, which would mean a 0.12 KV line to ground voltage, considering that we are in a three phase system. Now, I got a question. Where is the 0.24 kV for the loads? Remember that the loads have been defined as 0.24 kV line to ground voltage and the set voltage basis considers line to line voltages. Then we need to define a voltage level equal to 0.24 kV times square root of 3, which is 0.415 kV. For more information about the voltage basis, Please watch the voltage basis and solve video. Now, to plot the circuit, we need to use the bus coordinates command in order to define the X and Y coordinates of each bus. Opening this file, we see that there are three number information separated by commas. The first one is the name of the bus, the second one is the X value, and the last one is the Y value. The last line defines an energy meter called sub, placed at the first terminal of the line MDV201 underscore connector. This is the first line after the substation transformer. The entire feeder is connected to the substation transformer through this line. Finally, let's open the run DSS file in OpenDSS. Besides the compile master circuit 5 DSS command line, there are also a few monitors that are not going to be used in this tutorial and the solve command. Bear in mind that the default solution is the snapshot. Let's run the compile master circuit 5 DSS line and then the solve command. After that, we can check a few reports out by using the show menu. For example, the voltage LN nodes. Here we can see all nodes lines around and line to line voltages. Just for fun, let's open the powers KVA elements report as well. In this one, we can find all the powers injected in the power delivered elements and in the power conversion elements. For more information about this report, please check the show tutorial video. Now, another way of opening those files is by using a command line. For the powers KVA elements reports, for example, we can run the show powers KVA elements command line, as you can see. Note that this script contains different options of showing the results. 
For instance, we can use this command line and plot this circuit. In this plot, the red mark represents the substation transformer. Do you remember that it had its sub property set to yes? Here it is. The thicker the line is, the more is the power flowing through it. We can also zoom in and click on any line in order to get some of its results. For example, we can select this line and then right click and select, for example, the values option. Some information about this line, like its terminal buses and its losses, are shown. For more information about the plot command, please watch the plot video. Thanks for watching.